Tonight, I want to talk about something a little different because not enough people are talking about why this is all happening in the first place. And I mean, like, really, let's just go down to fundamentals. We're watching the story. Maybe you've seen it. What is this about? Why are we having a debt ceiling showdown? Why are Republicans threatening to tank the global economy and default for the first time in this country's history unless they get their way to impose austerity and cut federal spending on those programs severely? Now, the stated justification for the hostage taking, you hear it everywhere, doesn't make any sense. And this is really the key to understanding this whole thing. The sort of top line answer, which again has been taken for granted as the answer in most mainstream coverage, is that Republicans want to cut spending. And they want to cut spending because they have an ideological commitment to cutting spending. You see that everywhere. Kevin McCarthy says it. The reporters, by and large, that report on him tend to sort of go along with that. That's the fight. It is simply not true. It is maddening to see it repeated because it cannot possibly be the actual answer. And this isn't speculation or mind reading on my part. These are just the facts, the history. This is an empirical situation. We know that cannot be the answer because we have seen what the Republican Party does when it has control of the government and is free to pursue its agenda. When Republicans control both houses of Congress and the presidency. You were alive for this. I was too. We were all here. We saw it all happen, right? What did they do? Well, they cut taxes for corporations and rich people. And they do that every time without fail, right? And that's because the Republican Party really does believe in that. They really do believe in cutting taxes for corporations and rich people. They really do use their power to make it happen. It's the one piece of legislation they'll manage to get passed even when they're screwing up left and right. Did it in George W. Bush, right? Did it in Trump. They push deregulation. They make life harder for undocumented immigrants. They restricted illegal immigration. Sometimes they pick cultural fights. They tend to boost spending for defense. But one thing they do not do when they have unified control of the federal government is reduce spending. Again, this is just a historical fact. I'm not doing any mind reading. I'm just telling you the simple fact of the matter. When they have control of the government, they do the opposite of reducing spending. They increase spending when their party is in power, when they control the White House. Why? Well, I think because, in the main, government spending is popular and tends to boost the political fortunes of the White House and the president, in this case, a Republican president. It helps the Republican president get reelected. Axios put together this handy chart of government spending. The purple line is defense. The brown line is everything else. You can see it there. Spending goes up during the administration of Ronald Reagan and George W. Bush. And then it slows down a little bit. See that little flat line? during the Clinton years, <laughs> okay? Again, that's when Bill Clinton was a president and then uh, after the, the uh, House got taken over by Newt Gingrich, right, Republicans had a big budget standoff and they imposed spending cuts, right? Then what happens? Well, then spending skyrockets under George W. Bush, okay? See, see how that line goes up, right? Again, George W. Bush takes office, he's got a House and Senate, right, Republicans, they forced the country into two very pointless, very expensive wars. They also ran up a lot of domestic spending. And then what happens after that? Oh, look, it drops again. <laughs> Pretty dramatically under the Democratic president. And see the dip around 2011 there? That's the last time that Republicans were in opposition and held the House and held the debt ceiling hostage. The exact same playbook as right now. They demanded Democrats agree to painful, unpopular spending cuts or else Republicans would crater the economy. So again, Republicans in power, spent, spent, spent for decades while their president, they had the presidency, turned around and pretended to care about curbing spending once Democrats are in power. Bill Clinton, certainly Barack Obama. And again, why? What's going on? Why are they not consistent, right? The answer is very simple and straightforward. They wanted to make it harder for Barack Obama to get reelected. Here's Mitch McConnell just days after Republicans retook Congress in 2010. Over the past week, some have said <clears throat> it was indelicate of me to suggest that our top political priority over the next two years should be to deny President Obama a second term. But the fact is, if our primary legislative goals are to repeal and replace the health spending bill, to end the bailouts, cut spending, 
and shrink the size and scope of government. The only way to do all of those things is to put someone in the White House who won't veto any of these things. But they don't want to shrink the size and scope of government. They just had control of the government under George W. Bush, and they did not shrink its scope or its size. Again, you can't take what they're saying at face value because it makes no sense. So Obama was forced to strike a deal to get the debt ceiling raised, which pushed austerity measures that appreciably slowed the recovery from the financial crisis. It made the economy worse. It created unnecessary misery for millions. It also made it worse than it should have been when he was running for a second term in 2012. You can see it right here on this chart. The top line is how much the government was projected to spend during the Obama years. The bottom line is how much the government actually spent after the Tea Party forced Democrats to cut spending. See how the bottom line, the amount the country has spent, is way lower than what originally was projected before Republicans demanded cuts? But then you'll see something else. See how it kind of bows up there, starts to go up? It looks like the bottom line starts to tick up around. Drum roll, please. When could it be? Ah, yes, 27, 2017. Right after Donald Trump was elected and Republicans controlled Congress. What did they do? They started spending, of course. Let's go back to the first chart for a second and look at government spending under Trump. Oh, yeah, it skyrocketed. Look at the line shoot up. Non-military spending in particular went way up under Trump and Republicans. In fact, Republicans spent so much, partnered with massive tax cuts to the rich and corporations, the deficit increased nearly 40% under Trump. Now, again, <laughs> I'm belaboring this a little bit, but, but, but I, I just I can't bear it, okay? I think at this point, everyone sort of agrees Republicans don't actually care about the federal deficit. That was the old excuse, and, and no one buys it anymore. Clearly, they don't. You can't care about the deficit while you're also pushing massive tax cuts for the rich. Untenable. But people still haven't really come around to the, the even more basic idea that Republicans, they don't care about spending either, the size and scope of government. But that's what the numbers say. Again, this is just, I'm just reading you the history. So then the question becomes, this is a little bit of a mystery. Well, not really a big one. But the question is, if Republicans don't care about spending, which they don't, then why are they forcing a crisis over the debt ceiling? What's it really all about? And again, the answer is very simple. It is about asserting dominance over the Democratic president and hurting his political fortunes. I know that sounds cynical. But there is literally no other way to interpret the remarkably consistent position Republicans take about these matters of spending. President Biden himself acknowledged as much over the weekend. I think there are some MAGA Republicans in the House who know the damage that it would do to the economy. And because I am president and presidents are responsible for everything, Biden would take the blame, and that's the one way to make sure Biden's not reelected. Look at it this way. Republicans recognize high degrees of spending under a president tend to be politically popular. In fact, Mitch McConnell admitted as much back in 2019. Everyone else has forgotten this quote, but I have not. <laughs> this is tattooed in my brain, because back in 2019, The Washington Post reported, quote, Mitch McConnell told President Trump privately that no politician has ever lost an election for spending more money. Inverse is also true. Lowering the amount of government spending tends to hurt the economy, hurt American voters, tends to be politically unpopular. So again, the Republican calculus is simple. You spend like there's no tomorrow when you're in power because it helps you politically. When you're out of power, you do everything possible to stop Democrats from spending in order to hurt them. And it just so happens Republicans have some pretty great leverage in these negotiations by, again, threatening to blow up the world economy. The current MAGA Republican Party is completely untethered from any unifying vision of the social contract, particularly on matters of political economy, where they're all over the place. They, they don't really know even what they want. So they're totally fine taking the economy hostage to get their way. They have the leverage because so many of them are political nihilists who don't really believe in anything except their own power. And there's a reason why you have this cliche. You've heard it all the time, right? Negotiating with terrorists. And the reason people invoke that cliche is you're at an inherent disadvantage negotiating with someone who is going to do something malevolent and destructive, completely unbound by any rules or norms. But also, if you give in to that person and their demands, it then incentivizes them to act in the same way in the future. And this is why we're here. Barack Obama gave in largely to their demands in 2011. And here we are, more than a decade later, in the exact same position. Only now... I would argue Republicans are even possibly 
more sociopathic about this stuff than they were during the Tea Party years. Like, do you really think the Republican conference that voted for Donald Trump's coup is going to think twice before blowing up the economy to hurt Joe Biden? I frankly don't have a solution here. President Biden says he, he, he won't sidestep the issue by invoking the constitutional requirement that the government pay its debts. It's written right there in the 14th Amendment. It says the debt shall not be questioned. That seems pretty definitive to me. And many of them have called to do that. And the Democrats uh, get some blame here because they did not raise the debt ceiling during the lame duck session after last year's midterms, like many folks, including myself and Senator Bernie Sanders, said they should do. So here we are. But we're in this position chiefly because the Republican Party wants more than anything else in the world for Joe Biden to lose and a Republican, most likely the guy who tried to end American democracy, to win in 2024. But the least we in the media can do is accurately describe what's actually happening.